everyone, Old School Pokemon here. Today's video, gonna be discussing my February 2021 eBay sales. Before we hop into that, I do want to mention a few things while we're sitting at my eBay store homepage, whatever you want to call it. First off, the number of active eBay listings. I have 2,359 active eBay listings as of recording this video. If you remember from my January 2021 eBay sales video, my goal for the month of February was to have 2,250 active eBay listings. Luckily, I surpassed that goal by about 100 listings, 109 listings. So my new goal for uh, March 2021 is to have 2,600 active eBay listings by the next eBay sales video. And I have a ton of cards to list still, plus we also have Battle Styles releasing March 19th, so that should be, be a fairly realistic goal for me. Um, we're gonna go, we're gonna shoot for 2,600 active EB listings by the end of March 2021. The other thing I wanted to mention were all of these eBay auctions that I have going on right now. Uh, usually whenever, whenever I show all of my, my played and damaged Watsy holo cards within different collection pickups that I show off, uh, I mentioned how to you guys how I don't actually sell any of the like heavy, heavily played damaged condition cards. I just kind of keep them in boxes until I accumulate enough to auction off. Uh, I actually went ahead and decided to list all of the cards that I had accumulated as eBay auctions and those will be going on this week. I just listed these auctions uh, Friday, March 5th and Saturday, March 6th. So if you're interested, they'll be ending with, uh, in the next seven days on the following Friday and Saturday nights. I basically just list them all. They're all heavily played, damaged condition somewhere around there. But I basically just list them all by the, the card type. So like first off, we have a first edition Shadowless base set champ card, Shadowless uh, base set Alakazam card, and then we have two Shadowless base set Hitman Chan cards. So I just basically went ahead and listed everything like that. So like right here, you have five unloaded base set uh, Chansey cards six unloaded base set fairy cards, so on and so forth, all the way down. So you got base set, jungle set, fossil set, all the way down to Neo Destiny set. Majority of these cards are unlimited. There are a few first editions, but if you're interested, definitely check those out. Might be able to scoop up some good deals through those auctions. Anyway, let's hop back into the actual part of this video, the part everyone's curious about, the actual eBay sales for February 2021. So first off, uh, we're looking at my my sold page on eBay. So we got all orders for last month, which would have been February. Total of 1,322 orders for $35,932.67. Now, if you take this 1322 and divide it by 28, since there were 28 days in February, you come out with 47 orders per day, which is about on average with my, I, I just say 50 orders per day. So that's about on average with what I what I normally do. And then if you take this $35,932.67, divide it by the total number of sales, you come out with an average order size of $27.18, which is a little bit higher than my typical average. I typically average between $20 and $25 per sale. So that's a little bit higher, which is always nice to see. Now let's go ahead and give you kind of the, the breakdown here. This is the one of the pages that eBay gives you for your eBay sales. So we're looking at the sales for last month, like I said, February 1st, 2021 through February 28th, 2021. Uh, total sales for the month, $35,206.62. This number does differ a little bit from the number that I just showed you right here. Can't figure out why that difference is, but I always base my totals on this number right here. So total, $35,206.62. Uh, all the taxes and government fees that eBay collects, $2,069.41. All of my eBay selling costs, so this includes any insertion fees, final value fees, promoted listing fees, as well as all of my, my shipping that I do directly through eBay, which I have started to do 
a, the majority of my shipping directly through eBay, whether that be the standard envelope with tracking or the like just regular first class priority mail, whatever you want to, whatever method you use. I've been doing a lot more directly through eBay versus my postage program. Um, so in total, selling costs for the month, $6,544.94. So if you take the total sales, subtract the taxes and government fees, subtract all the selling costs, you're left with a net sale total of $26,592.27. Now we'll go ahead and show you the breakdown of those figures. So what you're looking at right here is the kind of the spreadsheet that I use every month. Uh, first off, we have the total sales for February 2021, $38,031.12. Now this does include all of the eBay sales, so that $35,000 figure plus all of these sales directly through PayPal, which I still do some sales directly through PayPal. Majority of my business is obviously directly through eBay. Um, but in total for February, $38,031.12 in sales. Now all of my kind of ex essential expenses, if you will, eBay fees and eBay shipping, like I said, $6,544.94. Sales tax that eBay collects, $2,069.41. PayPal fees for the sales directly through PayPal, $153.58. And Disha postage, um, like I said, I have been using the eBay shipping for majority of my shipments. However, for sales that were directly through PayPal or international sales, um, the Indisha program that I use is a lot easier for international sales um, as well as sales direct through PayPal. So I do still use this program a little bit, uh, but in total, um, international sales or direct through PayPal sales, the postage cost was $1,019.50. I didn't place any insurance on any of those packages, so that's a zero for the month. Stamp postage, this column's kind of changed a little bit. Uh, this used to be any stamps that I purchased through the post office, whether that be international stamps or non-machinable stamps, whatever. Um, it's now more or less just changed into what I actually purchase at the post office, whether that be if I have to pick up a random box in the post office or any of my packages that I send via express mail, mainly to CGC or PSA um, card submissions. That's kind of that's the total that I have right here showing. So in total for the month of February, uh, $402.70. This was, I believe it was three express mail submissions into CGC and PSA. Uh, one for PSA, two for CGC. And then it also includes, um, I had to print out FedEx labels for a huge bulk collection that I purchased. So that's the shipping as well through FedEx uh, in there, just because I didn't have anywhere to put it. So there's that postage scale fee. Uh, that's my fee for using this postage program, $15.95 per month. Refunds, not too, too much in terms of refunds for the month, uh, $7.69, which is awesome. And then didn't have, didn't do, aren't doing any consignments, but I'm gonna start that up in a couple months and I'll do, I'll do a video when I actually do start that up again. Um, so total expenses, for the month of February, $10,213.77. Next up, we're getting into the actual purchases that I made. I purchased a whole bunch in the month of February, a lot more than usual. So right off the bat here, Patreon membership, my, I'm subscribed to Rusty, TCA Gaming, and SM Pratt, so $35 per month for that. Canva or Canva, however you say it, subscription, that's a yearly subscription, $119.40. That I use to make my YouTube thumbnails. Um, my my awesome YouTube thumbnails come from come from that program right there. Uh, Mad L distributor purchase number one, that's my Pokemon distributor. Uh, $588. This was a whole bunch of collection boxes for Champion's Path, as well as a few other collection boxes that contained um XY Evolutions booster packs, so definitely wanted to pick those up. So that was that purchase right there. Next up, we have the two CGC submission um, submissions that I had throughout the month, $1,608 and $2,339.60. These two submissions weren't the ones that you saw within my previous video, the CGC submission video. This was two, two other submissions that I had um, going off to CGC. One was the beginning of February, and then one was the end of February. And then the one that you just saw within the pre my previous video, that one I'm still waiting to send off. I actually ran out of um, 
the semi-rigid card holders. So I just ordered some of those and I'm waiting for those to come in before I send that submission off into CGC. Uh, then we have a few random purchases from Target, $66.37, $22.93, Getting into a few eBay purchases. These are mostly card supplies, packaging supplies. Uh, $402.72, $1.66. This was a, so every every quarter since I have a premium eBay store, I get a $50 coupon to the eBay shipping store. So every quarter I purchase the eBay branded boxes um, just to use use my coupon. So my total for this, this quarter was $51.66. I did have that $50 coupon. So I only paid $1.66 for those boxes that I had ordered. Uh, this one right here, $1,229.80. This was an actual collection I purchased off of eBay. Uh, don't purchase too, too many collections directly off of eBay anymore. It's a lot, most, most of the collections I've been finding lately come directly through Facebook or people reaching out to me through email, which is always nice. Um, but anyway, I did purchase one collection through directly through eBay. There's that one right there. Um, and then the bulk of my purchases for the month of February um, were directed through PayPal. So PayPal purchase number one, $525. This was a lot of six or 7,000 vivid voltage cards. Uh, they were all packed fresh and it included everything except the hit cards. So you got the commons, the uncommons, the rares, the reverse hollows, and the hollows. And the thing I liked about, about this collection right here was uh, first off, I wasn't able to purchase Vivid Voltage booster boxes from my distributor because I was away working during that time, during the, the pre-order of Vivid Voltage. Um, so I wasn't able to purchase any Vivid Voltage through them. Plus, the seller of this, this collection right here had actually taken the time to completely organize everything. So all the cards were organized, numerically organized. Uh, which was a huge help for me. So I ended up purchasing this collection for $525, um, mainly just to have that inventory available on eBay. And those cards have been selling quite well so far. So that was that was a good, decent purchase right there. Uh, definitely won't make a ton of money off of that purchase, but make a little bit. Um, next up, PayPal purchase number two, $363.31, and then number three, $1,014.50. These were actually two purchases from the same seller. Um, it included a whole bunch of Expedition and Aquapolis, commons and uncommons, with a few rares. All those cards were near mint condition. There weren't any that I'm going to be submitting into PSA or CGC, but definitely solid near mint condition collection. Great inventory for my eBay store. I actually already have all those cards listed, and those have been selling really well as well. Um, I think there were around a thousand Expedition cards, and then maybe three or four hundred Aquapolis cards. Most of them, like I said, commons and uncommons. There were maybe ten or twenty rare cards within within those lots as well. But uh, that was that was another really good purchase for the month. Um, next up. PayPal purchase number four, $9,650. If you watched my previous video, the CGC submission video, all of those Watsy Hollow cards came from this purchase right here. Um, that wasn't everything that was in that purchase. Um, it was a good portion of the value from that purchase. However, there were also maybe 50 or 100 additional Watsy Hollow cards that were better to be listed as just near mint or excellent or played. So cards that I'm not going to be submitting into CGC for grading. Uh, there were also a ton of Watsy bulk cards, mainly unlimited base set, jungle set, and fossil set, as well as a whole bunch of those those set rare uh, sets rare cards as well. So that was that was a huge purchase. Uh, I showed you a small portion of that, but you didn't you didn't see everything from that purchase right there. Um, next up. $3,000, this was for those 400 um, Shining Fates booster packs that I had purchased. Paid $7.50 per pack, and if you watched my the previous video, CGC submission video, I actually showed all the hits that I pulled from those packs. So, paid $3,000 for those booster packs. Next up, $1,296. This was an interesting purchase, which I'll do a video on at some point. Um, this was a huge bulk purchase, uh, 12,000 cards, uh, was all commons, uncommons, and rares from the Diamond and Pearl era through the Heart Gold Soul Silver era. So I'm really interested to see how this purchase turns out, and I'll talk about that within another video where I actually show 
that, that collection and so on and so forth. These final three purchases right here, this was all the same purchase. $100 was for the packaging supplies that the seller used. $200 was for a kind of, kind of middleman fee. I had someone go pick this collection up and ship it to me. And then the $10,000 was the actual collection itself. Uh, so $10,300 for this collection. This was a massive Watsy bulk collection purchase. Um, I actually just got it in maybe about a week ago and it contains a lot of cards. They're all nicely organized. And there's probably 20,000-ish Watsy cards, um, majority being commons and uncommons. There's about a thousand rare cards in there as well. The condition on these cards is kind of all over the place. There's a decent amount of near mint condition, but there's also a lot of played excellent condition cards as well. Um, it's gonna take me a while to go through that, but I'll show these couple purchases within another video and kind of talk about those within within its own video because there's there's between these two purchases right here there's a there's a lot of cards to go through but anyway total resale purchases for the month of february thirty two thousand five hundred sixty two dollars and twenty nine cents so if you take the total sales subtract the total expenses subtract the total resale purchases you're left with a loss of four thousand seven hundred forty four dollars and ninety four cents now it is a loss for the month of February. However, I guess you can consider it a strategic loss for the month of February, just because the I did well on sales, but I purchased a ton of stuff, which I'll be able to make a decent amount of money on. It's just going to take time to actually recoup those purchases and make money on those purchases. Um, so yeah, that's why we had the, the loss for February. But overall, really good month. Uh, super happy with those with those numbers, especially this the total sales figure right here. Uh, I was really surprised that the total sales for February were greater than January. I believe January was around thirty two thousand, uh, maybe thirty five. But February was a couple days shorter. There's only twenty eight days in February where there's thirty one in January, so a couple days shorter. And you, I, we had a. Um, bigger, bigger volume of sales for the month, which is awesome. Hopefully we can keep that up for March. And I can tell you right now, my resale purchases for March are going to be a lot smaller than this. I did purchase one big collection uh, already, about the first week in March, uh, which I will show within a video because that's going to be an awesome collection. But aside from that, probably not going to purchase too, too much aside from the, the Battle Styles uh, purchase, which will be that, that's a modern product purchase, so I don't really consider that one because that one won't be too, too expensive. But anyway, um, definitely won't, gonna be, won't be purchasing too, too much for uh, March. Anyway, that's the video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think, and I will see you in the next one.